Hey everyone, welcome to Avamax Time Tuesday. Brady back with you today. Gonna get dirty and tie a mop fly. We're gonna do kind of an updated, uh, better mop fly in our opinion. You're using the Galaxy Mop Chenille from Hairline, which has got that nice mottled color to it with some flash. And then we're also gonna update the color on this one. This is a standard um, W Noodle collar, but we'll do a double loop collar just to get it a little bit buggier. So we'll start out here with our hook and our bead. And we have the Umqua XC450 hook. This is the updated version of the Competition Series 450, if you're familiar with that one. It's a new hook, it's an updated version. Fish is uh, just as great, if not better, as that old 450 did. And then we have our bead. This is an English Spork Group 4.6 mil slotted tungsten bead, so just a giant heavy bead to help get this fly down. And we're going to add even more weight to it. I'm adding, this is the 015 lead wire. And I usually do about 10 wraps of this. I like the 015 size because once we break it off here, we can take it and snug it right up into that slot on that bead and then we're not taking up too much of our shank because we're going to leave a lot of that exposed on this fly. And to keep that from moving on us, we'll take a little zappa gap and we'll hit it. Just to make sure everything gets locked in place. Like so, we'll let that dry. So then we're going to come in with our thread, and this is the UTC 70 Near in tan. And we're just going to start a slight little ball right behind, locking it in place behind that lead. And then we can walk up onto the lead with some extra wraps, keep that off from moving again, and prep our chenille. So this is the Galaxy Mop chenille, as I mentioned, from Hairline. It's a great color. Uh, in the tan, you can do the chartreuse, the cream, there's a whole variation available for them. I'm going to measure it out. I like to do about two shanks in measuring in length. And we'll clip it just a little bit long to give ourselves something to work with there. We don't want to go short. And then I like to burn each end. And that's going to keep this material from coming undone. This material does have a nice core to it and is wound and woven really well, so it doesn't tend to come undone as easily as some of the other ones out there. But burning those ends will help prevent that as well. And then I'm going to puncture the end of this and go ahead and thread it right on through and up and around on that hook. Keeps it nice and centralized, and then you can sort of sneak it on forward, work it up onto that lead, where I'll grab it here with my thread. So I'm going to try and get some of that material exposed so that I can grab it with my thread here and lock it down into place. So that's not going anywhere on us. And then, like I said, we're going to do a little dub loop here. And throw in some hair's ear plus dubbing just the natural hair's ear which is a really solid dubbing material from hairline so we'll get our material sort of prepped to go in there there we go so we'll sneak this hair's ear on up and in there I'm going to get a little bit more. I want this to be fairly thick. And give her a spin. Nice, thick, matted dubbing loop that we can then coat a nice buggy collar for this juicy juicy mop fly we'll call it a 
crane fly imitation can work for your larger caddis bugs. Also just a great attractor. Something coming down that looks nice and calorie, calorie rich. The fish just seem to not be able to avoid. If you haven't fished the mop flies, definitely recommend giving them a chance. Very, very productive pattern. We'll give it a whip finish here. And that's all there is to it. So you can simplify it to doing it a lot of different colors. You can do the natural tans. The Galaxy just tends to add a little bit of flare. I'm going to burn that in just a little bit more. Give it that buggy look on the back end. But a nice juicy fly for those big hungry trout.